So far we've created the leg and I did tweak it a little bit. Um, the foot, I made it a little bit nicer so it actually has a little, an an a couple ankles. It act I fixed it so that it actually has some ankles. And when you press the number three, again this is just the poly smooth, you can see that we actually have the makings of a leg. So that's pretty exciting. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the transparency again. And this time I'm going to create another cylinder because we're going to work on the torso. Once again, I'm going to reduce my subdivision cap to zero, my subdivision height to eight, and my subdivision axes to 12. And I'm also go ahead, going to go ahead and assign the existing material Lambert 2 so that I can actually see through it. Going to the front view, we're going to do the same thing as we did to the uh, leg. But uh, this time though, we are going to be making sure that it is actually at the center of the character, the cylinder, and we're going to delete half of the torso. The reason why is because we in fact only have one torso, so we're going to tweak the right side and then we're going to mirror it to the left side. Another thing that we're going to do differently is actually select the ver vertices but leave the center ones there. This will make it easier when we mirror it to the other side. Once again, we're going to scale on one axis and then move. Grab some vertices, ignore the, ignore the center ones. Again, we're going to scale and move. Scale and move. Scale and move. Maybe just move a little. Go ignore the chest for a little bit. Scale and move and maybe move these up. We'll take care of that in a second. All right, let's go to the front view. That was uh, F for focus. Now we get to tweak this part here. So let's go ahead and create her behind. Same story, you're going to move and scale. Not any more geometry there as you can see. We'll add those in a minute. So let's just go ahead and make sure that her torso or the ones, the vertices that we have are, is enough to go ahead and create the shape. Now the point of this is to keep the as low poly as possible. You always want to work with as low polygons as possible in Maya because you can always smooth it later. But it's easier to UV map. We'll get to that when we start talking about on my 200, Maya 200 series, we'll talk about UV mapping and texturing. But right now it's always easier to work with any type of model as long as it's low poly. This is going to be a low poly model and then we'll get I'll sh and then we'll we can always smooth it if we wanted to make it higher poly. I'm going to uh, ignore her chest for now. Actually I'm going to tweak this a little bit so that I'm going to have to go to the front to make sure that's okay. Just kind of make sure that it goes underneath her chest and this one that's okay. Can always fix it later if we need to. The nice thing about Maya. Okay, so again, just scale in one direction. You don't want to uh, scale evenly because otherwise you're going to get some um, defor unpredictable deformation. Okay, so so far so good. I'm going to go ahead to the side view again and I'm going to add the insert edge loop tool. So again, I'm only going to add edges where I feel is necessary. I want to make sure that I have control over, over my geometry and I also have control over how many polygons are in, my uh, are in this character. Again, as I was mentioning, it's easier to work with a low poly than it is to work with a crazy high poly uh, character. That even includes with rigging. Rigging, if you have a very high poly character, it is, when you start painting weights, it can be a nightmare. Okay, so that's looking good. Going to add one more right here. Let's check the front. Make sure everything's okay. I don't like the shape of that, so I'm going to tweak that a little bit. I'm always looking for the sh the form. Okay, that looks okay. Maybe this one can be moved a little bit. So it can be more organic. Uh, that's kind of straight. Let's just go ahead and tweak those. I'm going to follow her 
shoulder there. Her tank top. Alright, let's take a look at it in the side view. I'm sorry, perspective view. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna make this flat. Let's get rid of that top face. You don't need that. And okay, so so far we have the leg, we have the torso. Delete the history. So let's go to edit, delete by type history. Let's make this semi transparent. And basically, I'm just going to grab these faces here and probably these faces here. and we are going to extrude. So it's gonna look weird because I selected the normal. So this is what it means by uh, doing the world, the, the world space versus the normal space. So normal space actually follows the, the path of the normal, but with world space, you'll be able to just go straight like a, like a brick or like a building. So um, this is just going to be, this is just kind of like the start and then I'm going to tweak it so that it actually fits her body a little bit better. I'm sure you guys can find reference out there for the chest area. I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain to you. It's funny because some students, I literally, I, when they model like the breast area, I'm always like, what are you, do you, have you ever seen a real chest before? You know, it's like, I'm pretty sure you have. I, I'm sure you have internet. I'm sure it exists. You really need to kind of review your anatomy. So it, it can always be a very interesting conversation when it comes to my uh, my students when they talk about it or when they try to recreate the female anatomy. Summer, take a look at reference. Don't be shy. There's plenty of normal uh, looking women out there that are used as reference. So feel free to use them as resource. Um, especially when it comes to, you know, characters. Okay, so, because the last thing you want is to, you know, just make them enormous. I mean, they don't need to be enormous, everybody. They can just be normal sizes. Um, it makes them look, you know, more realistic. If they're sh regularly shaped. Anyway. Enough of that subject matter. You can always press 3 to see what it looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and again. Alright, so this is the time where I start looking at topology. I feel like um, I'm not getting the curves right. And for very obvious reasons, it's not flowing very smoothly, right? So you always need to take a look. If you're in doubt and you have no idea what it's supposed to look like, I mean, just look at Google and then look at reference. So as you can see, there's some really nice lines and they all kind of end up in the nipple area. But uh, you can see that they kind of flow down. Same thing with this one. You can see that they kind of go across and that's kind of gives me an idea of what the topology is supposed to look like. Whoops. So again, it's basically about fo following the edge flow and I want the edge flow to kind of go down. So maybe I'll just kind of scoot these over like so. So using this reference, I will go ahead and pause the video so that I can tweak the chest area. In the next video, we will go over how to model an arm. All right, see you there.